get ready. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. Welcome back, everybody, to the Me and Jesse podcast. My name is Mark Pavlich, and in the grove, the big sexy, the star of the show, the one and only Jesse Martino. Do you know what Mark just said to me, everybody? Oh, <laughs> oh I'm scared. To Helen Belcher's oh, here. Uh, Our guest is here. We'll be we'll be right back, everybody. Oh, he's here already? Yeah, he's here already. Okay. We'll let him no, in. Why not? Okay. We'll let him We'll be right back. Me and Jesse podcast. Get ready. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast. With Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. It's time for the Me and Jesse podcast with Mark Pavlich and Jesse Martineau. Welcome back, everybody, to the Me and Jesse podcast. I am Mark Pavlich, and in the Grove, the big, sexy Jesse Martineau, and our special guest today, one of my favorite guests. We don't bring people back that often, but I bring this guy back because he's special. Okay, everybody? Thank you. The one and only Alan Belcher. Great to have you on the show again. Thank Welcome back. Thank you guys very much. It was a blast last time, and a lot of things have changed. And uh, yeah, can't wait to catch up with you. Now, what I want to know is, you got you got arguably okay. We, let's forget about the UFC stuff. You have arguably the biggest fight of your entire life coming up at the end of February. And I never started watching Bare Knuckle until you got involved yeah. in Bare Knuckle. Okay, so the Bare Knuckle oh, wow. people. All the bare knuckle people that listen, you know, I'm on tilt today and I've been on tilt for probably 54 years of my life. So 
you know what was weird? I never paid attention to it because they weren't getting the right people involved. The second they go, oh, we're going to get Alan Belcher involved. We're going to get this guy involved. Then people started watching, yeah. including including me. I would watch two chickens fight in the middle of the road. I would watch two bums fight each other. I would watch anything. I would wa not watch Bare Knuckle until they brought somebody that made wow. sense to me. Alan Belcher yeah, was that person. It was actually when Alan came on the show that we were like, oh, okay. Because we weren't, Mark and I, to be honest, weren't sure about it before. We're like, oh, I don't yeah. know, I don't know, I don't know. And then we started watching when we knew you were coming. We're like, let's start watching. And you're like, okay. There's, they're on I remember, I remember that I was, I was convincing you guys of, of the, my mindset around it or whatever. But you guys hear that? They're watching Bare Knuckle in Canada mm -hmm. because of yours truly yep. right here. Absolutely. What, what, listen, listen, we had we had Robin Black on the show and he's like, you guys got to watch Bare Knuckle, Bare Knuckle. I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm not going to watch that because I have not taken to this slap fighting bullshit. You know, the slap fighting. I, th I think Dana White yeah. needs to slap. OK, and if he wants to do that with me, I'm in because you know why? I think there's something mentally you would wrong slap fight now. Dana White. Listen to yeah, me when I, I tell you, you I would choke him unconscious four ways from Sunday for what he's done lately. Okay. But what I'm trying to tell you, the slap thing I can't get into. I watched it. I'm like. There's no strategy. There's no real thing to it. So when I watched what you said before about watching the bare knuckle, I was like, the way you told me you were training for it, how it's different. I got all that. But this slap, right. this slap thing, I can't get into. I just can't. I can't do no, it. No, let's let's put a can on. Let's put slap fighting in the trash. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Absolutely. Like this, this isn't even in the same category. This, yeah. That is. This is in the category, it's bare knuckle and even arm wrestling is in the category of going to war and battling another person. I mean, that's this is in our core. This is what we've been doing. This is how we survive. We're, we're playing games now in real life that mimic our, yeah. you know, our survival that we've had. That's how we, that's how we express ourselves. Yeah. We want to, we want to fight for our survival somehow. So. Slap fighting is um, is silly to me. Yeah. yeah, I mean the thing about it is 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 we're we're tough. Like, you know, like an MMA fighter is probably tough. I know that I could probably take a hit, but I would have to be. You'd have to be saying, "All right, I'm going to do damage to my right. my brain, That's... not possibly get your eyeball knocked out or something." That's what I'd be thinking of, or blow your eardrum or eardrum. something. That happens yeah. a lot. And um, that's just you're you're in intentionally taking damage to a win and that's not good see like at least in in bare knuckle if it comes down to it you have you have there's some damage there you have a decision you know do i fight through this is it worth it you know yeah. you can at least make that decision you know and my goal just like i told you guys last time is to not get hit right and to get a knockout as fast as possible i can't remember how many i'd had at that time but um, you know, just to catch you guys up with between boxing and bare knuckle boxing, I'm now eight and oh since I've came back, and my last seven are all knockouts, all except for my first. My first was a decision, unanimous, but uh, they're all knockouts from now on. So, um, well, they've all been knockouts, and, and from now on, they're, they're all going to be knockouts. That's my now is that like <clears> where you're mentality. at now, like where you're at now. That's expected, isn't it? In bare knuckle, like it is a knockout, or like how many go to the the, the card? Um, the I scorecard. Don't really like, know that they they're, they're, they've got a, they're close to a thousand fights in, for statistics now, so the data is there. I just don't know that off the top of my hand. It's pretty astonishing how little of um, like um, how what's the number is for uh, concussions. Yeah, and for even fights stopped by cut is less than you would think. Um, concussions and broken hands and all that type of yeah. stuff. You know? Well, that was so, the one uh, thing that we we talked about before because that's what people don't understand with boxing. You have gloves and they're designed that you take more damage and you can take. When you get clipped with a knuckle, the fight's over. Like in yeah. most cases, if someone if you hit someone and you click and hit them clean, the fight's not continuing. Right. There's a yeah. There's a certain bone on bone type of vibration in the, the it moves your brain and and it's uh you get rocked a lot easier. I mean I've had 
I've had a, a lot of MMA fights. I've taken some really hard hits to the chin and to the face, to the head. And um, I was rarely, I was rarely rocked ever in the UFC. There's only a few times, wow. you know, and um, bare knuckle. Uh, when I fought Bobo Labanon, which was, you know, um, he's, a, he's a good fighter, but technically, and I feel like just my experience and stuff, it was, um, I could have, I should have thought, you know, most people would be thinking I would, I could win that fight, you know, without it being close. And even him, he hit me with kind of like not even a great punch that got me in the ear. And just that I felt something when it hit me in the ear that I'd never felt before. It just kind of got in my ear and kind of rang my ear, kind of rocked me. It was a weird thing that you wouldn't experience with a boxing glove or an MMA glove. It was a lot different. What was does, it? does it look at this? Do you are you starting to look into the celebrity boxing thing because there's so much money involved hmm. now? And I'm not, I don't want to say Jake Paul, I'm saying is there's going to be other guys for you to fight, right? Right, and and what I'm saying is, do you see yourself because so many people we've had, um, so many people even on our show right now that you know they were MMA fighters and now they're crossing over to box. We had Kimbo Slice Jr. on uh, last week. He's now crossed over to do that. He's making way more money. And then we've had um, Anthony um, Pretty Boy on our Taylor. show, Taylor. Anthony Taylor on our show. He's he's not even – listen, I, I love Anthony as a person, but he's dog yeah. shit as a boxer. Like, he is. Like yeah. and, and, Anthony, don't get mad. Don't send me a message. Don't do anything. I guarantee you, you I – Listen, at 55 years old, I can outbox him right now. Like, that's a guarantee. Like, Jesse knows how I know how to box. And I just know that at 55, if I can outbox you at 55, you shouldn't be getting any money to box. So, But it's not about that, though, isn't it? It's about entertainment. that's because the point. Make, look at the money he's making. Yeah. He just he just right. signed another. That deal people want today. people want to see yeah. someone yelling somewhere, having like him and Floyd had the thing at the ringside, or whatever that was, yeah, and yeah. the sparring thing, and they're yelling back and forth. People tuned into that. People watch that, and that but then not, gets them to watch real, a fight. Though, you know, you, I you know, know it's not watching. real. I know he's not even a good he's not even a good trash talker. But what I'm saying is he's making so much money lately off of these celebrity boxing fights and and if there's anybody that fits that category it's alan belcher meaning that you could cross over easy to fight people there oh yeah okay yeah so i'm definitely thinking about that of course mark Mm. you know this um that's uh you know i wouldn't say really that that is the goal my goal is to of course my my goal is to flow wherever not where the money is so much but wherever i can fulfill my highest potential and Mm. i'm starting to see this i'm starting Mm. to see this thing as you know i'm starting to see my life and my career as a whole picture of how um i'm influencing and inspiring some people even if it's a small amount it's not that i'm a big celebrity or anything like that and like one of the greatest fighters of all time but in my, you know, in my life's work, I've been able to touch some people. And now that I'm doing that, I think intentionally, I feel like that's what it's about. So you're looking at publicity. What are the biggest, you know, what are the bigger, um, uh, bigger impact, bigger impact yeah. fights, those types of things. Uh, making more money is a great thing too, of course. Yeah. You know, so it's you know playing that game. Is, is that working is out for you? Is that working out with bare knuckle? Are they paying you what you should be making? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I okay, did a good. four fight deal. Yeah, I did good. a four fight deal with them, and and this is my this is my fourth win. I'm going to win the belt, and I'll be a, a free agent. So I feel like with with able to go through it, make the money that I have with bare knuckle, get these knockouts, get this belt, good. and then be. Have, be a, have a little bit of freedom to make the next decision, which I want. I would like to continue defending the belt after I get it and challenging bigger names. You know, um, I don't know if if the money will be there to bring on a Francis Ngannou or something like that, but um, whoever they can afford to bring in, as long as I'm the, the the stakes are higher and it's more of a challenge for me. I'm happy to do it, and I'm also happy to to um, explore other options in in boxing and in MMA. I've I've been I've pursued my boxing career so that I will have another avenue, and it's it's um it's something that I've always 
wanted to do. The UFC kind of held me back from doing professional boxing. And that's what I, yeah. when I, when I got back, when I met you and I was 21, 22 years old, I was, I was really interested in being a professional boxer. And I had a, quite a bit of amateur boxing and kickboxing mm -hmm. and I wasn't near good enough. I don't think back then, but in my mind I was, and that's what I wanted to do. So I think years later, you know, I, I understand the game a lot more. So now I'm five and oh, I'm, I made it, my last fight, put me in the top 90 in the world yep. on box rec <clears throat> so just chipping away with that right there too so yeah but uh, 90 can, 90 can go to 60 50 for like like this like this yeah like that yeah for sure i, I feel like with five fights you being 90 in the world in professional boxing is <laughs> is good and yeah and, and that's what i want to do i want to jump up there my next my next 10 fights be you know top 10 15 in the world yes. ready for you know something there so you know, I'm parlaying all these things together, man. I'm just creating it. I'm just imagining and and uh, putting things into action and and uh, hopefully proving to my kids that that they can do something similar. You know. Well, you said yeah. a lot of things have changed. What's some of the big big changes that you've implemented over this last time? Oh, big changes that I've implemented since I've been back to fighting. Yeah. Um, well, I, I feel like I'm just have a totally different, um, totally different mind. My oh. mind is completely different. All the years out, um, has been really beneficial to me. I think that, mm -hmm. that, um, um, I got back in the game, so my body was healthy enough while I, I still have that physical, you know, um, the, the physicality, uh, but my wisdom has got you know got a lot yeah. more so getting out of the game lets you look at it from a coach's perspective or even a an outsider a fan's perspective and and a lot of times there's a, a lot of benefit in looking at it from the from the outside at what you know these guys should be doing so after so many years of doing that i was really able to take that back into there and um and apply some some very smart things it's not so egotistical and you know right. as mark knows like i started in the ufc very uh young you know and i i had been boxing kickboxing doing mma since age 14 Jeez. so um i was very young when i got in all this so as i'm growing up as an adult my mentality is is a little different than other people you know what i mean so i'm um i'm really my whole world was was based around a belief that you couldn't let go of where, no, I can, if I can believe it, believe so I can't even let doubt slip in. I have to be the best in the world or whatever. So it's very egotistical. It's a, it's an illusion that a fighter, a young fighter lives in. Right. And so not many times a, a young fighter can overcome this type of fake mindset and become, you know, really get in touch with what reality is and do the right things and listen to your body and, and and listen to the matchups you know that's one thing you, you you know if you look at how you handle fighters and stuff i know mark used to manage fighters and stuff i'm not sure if you do that anymore but you'll the fighter wants to fight everyone they have to believe that they can be they want to book that you know when i was in the ufc as soon as i got in there i'm trying to go to the top i got mm -hmm. to the top 10 quick and then i want the belt but i'm doing that 10 years too early yeah so the man <laughs> the manager's job is to help you make the right matchup Right. And say, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get you there, young man. Let's make sure that you get the right matchups or whatever. Yeah. So it's a mentality. Once you're once you have I feel like my 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 I've, I have gained wisdom in, in the way that I think so that I can think like a smart, intelligent, logical matchmaker for myself and. Um, a coach to train myself so the conditioning is not a problem i i do what is necessary logically right, right. And, and yep you know that type of thing so that that's been a really but you know but it's not set up like that it's not set up like that in the ufc you know that as well as i do like no matter what age you are you can only say no so many times so 100%. the game the, the, mm. it's not like boxing the boxing world you can kind of fish through to get to 10 and 0 11 and 0 20 and 0 you can do that but in MMA, once you get to the UFC, this is the problem. You get there. I can never remember talking to Joe Silva back in the day and saying no to anybody. 
like Joe Silva would call me on the phone. We talk about movies for an hour, him and I, and then uh-huh. we would talk. We would talk five minutes about the next fight, and okay. he would say, he'd say, "Okay, Mark, uh, Jason McDonald won his first two fights easy. Now you're going to fight Rich Franklin." And I'm like, "Rich Franklin? Like, how did we go from Chris <laughs> Lieben to Rich Franklin? Right?" But that that's that's how that's how it was. And and he said, "Well, listen, I'll tell you what." I'll give you a new contract for Jason if you take the the fight with Rich Franklin. And I I said Jason what I and I I said Jason I'm not going to make this decision I'm going to ask you. And he said, "Well, that's a lot of money for me at this type of, you know, be, I was a prison guard. Yeah. Now I'm making money." So he took the fight and he lost, but then they gave him a new contract and then they mm-hmm. gave him two easy fights again and then they said, "Hey, do you want to fight Alan Belcher?" And I was like, "Oh, no, we don't want to fight Alan Belcher." Like in my head, right? I'm like, yeah. It's just a shitty matchup. Like, and then and then I was right again. And then they gave us then they gave us one or two easy fights again. And then they they go here. But they've created fight. that that you can't say no to it though. But you because can't if you say do, no, Jesse, then it's what set happens? up that way. And it seems like now, Alan, that you're in control of your own destiny now. That's what it seems like to me. Yes, yeah, that's one hundred percent. That's that's kind of like my my philosophy for my life is to control that. I spent all those years in the UFC. Um, I'm, uh, I'm blessed for the, the blessings that I got from it, but also I'm very happy to be, to be out of that, mm-hmm. the, the control and out of the grasp of the, yeah. of the corporate giant, you know, did and, Francis uh, just do, did Francis Nagano just pull the ultimate, Flax slow? Did he not? Can we can we commend him for that? Because he oh, yeah, just 100%. he just pulled the Fred, ultimate flex. Yeah, what Nganu just did was arguably probably the, the most crucial, critical thing. I agree for fighters that yeah. has been waiting to. Conor McGregor could have done this. Yeah, you're, you're right, right. You're right. You're right. You're right, Alan. Yeah. You're right. Okay, you look back four four or five years ago when yeah. Conor was on top. He could have changed it all yeah. for everybody, mm-hmm. but somehow or another, they got his hooks in him. They did the Floyd Mayweather thing with the UFC That's type right. of thing. And they kept him under, under the the roof or whatever, under the yeah. pyramid, under the pyramid scheme. <laughs> the pyramid. I guess you know. And <laughs> That's a good analogy. I like That's that. That's a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so um, Francis and is doing what we knew was inevitable to happen. As long as we kept growing and there's more people that are interested in the sport and other variations of fighting, that he took it and he started his own pyramid scheme. Or his, his idea is to, yeah. you know, that's where the fighters are going to go. That's where their minds are going. Sorry, the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. It just takes one person having balls. I didn't have the I, – I feel like I. this is what I've been thinking, you know, but there's only the guys at the very top with the most influence You're right. and the most publicity can do it. So, See, but why um, does he? Con- why does Connor do this though, Alan? Why does he come back and say, like, when I heard this the other day, I started laughing. He said, "I'm going to be a coach on the Ultimate Fighter show with with Chandler." I'm like, if that's not a hundred steps down, down, then him yeah. saying, you know, instead I'm going to take an arena in Ireland, I'm going to box whoever I want. I'm going to sell out the arena in Ireland and I'm going to keep all the pay-per-view points because it's my own production. Right. And he'll, he'll make that hundred million again, but instead he's going to be a, he's going to be a coach on the ultimate fighter. And I thought to myself, is that like, like a hundred steps down for this guy? Like it makes no sense. Who is giving him this direction? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. I think, um, Maybe this is the closest that he could come to. He could get to a, um, let's say, like, build me back up type yeah. of scenario. That's what I think fight. too. That's the only thing I can really, yeah. I can really think of because I'm with you. He has a lot of, um, he has a lot of influence under his own his own space, and maybe he is just locked into a contract and doesn't want to go through you know getting sued litigation yeah lit- yeah interesting yeah, yeah. because yeah, so, I mean, that's the only way that's the only way i see it the way alan just said because it doesn't make any sense he could fight jake paul tomorrow and make 25 million easy yeah. on, on that he, he could fight multiple guys boxing all over the place he could do he could rerun the floyd fight easy that's easy work they just have to call each other on their cell phones get that done 
and and he doesn't need anything to do with Zufa. And I don't get what he's doing. Like, like it makes no sense. Like, and I'm not even a Connor fan. I'm just saying is you 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 could see what Francis just did. Francis is sitting down right now, thinking to himself, "Okay, I'm going to fight uh, maybe Anthony Joshua, maybe this guy, maybe that guy, but I'm going to wait. It's going to come to me, and when it comes, I'm going to cash in, and literally, I'm going to make twenty million dollars with my eyes closed. With my eyes closed, he's going to make twenty million dollars." Right. Well, I think that yeah. the, 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 there is. You know, it goes back to what I said before about the entertainment factor. There is something to be done now. This is where sports and entertainment and the two things that we sometimes don't like to talk about because we want sport to be sport and we want it to be the, you know, mano a mano team versus team thing. But at the end of the day, there's right. dollar signs and there's and there's entertainment value that gets those dollar signs in there. Right. So where's that right. line? Like, where where do you actually start to put that in? Now, Connor's scenario, I think he's taken a big I mean, getting hit by a car was actually probably the best sub- publicity he's had in the last couple of years if we're being honest so you do something like this and maybe you know you get back in maybe he's got shares in it maybe he's promised some sort of sponsorship i don't know but it is interesting one now for yourself though and we talked about this before but you know how you know okay i've changed i've gone through this mindset change it's taken time which a lot of young people don't want it to be the answer well how do i get that time (laughs) and experience but we don't want to hear that when we're 20 because it doesn't feel like you have any so so you know later on now but now okay now you are you know the knockout king of bare bare knuckle fighting you you are moving out bigger sphere of influence where do you see yourself and how do you now take all the notoriety you have all the cred that you have and start to implement that message back to people to really bring in those changes that your experience and the time in your sport has given you. You probably know more in that time and learned more in that time than many people have. So how do you now start to change the script on everybody else? That's a great question. I think, (laughs) I think that like what we were talking about is the more the, the following the path, following the path, and seeing being open to which way to go if you're stuck in a contract with the ufc you only have so much like you gotta be the champ or whatever right this way i'm parlaying several things together to do it um so i think it could be you know um how how to get more of an influence is is going to be a matter of is it is it a bear on the bare knuckle platform is it a later a a comeback in mma is it a big boxing matchup, um, you know, with someone at the top of boxing for a belt or something? Um, I'm not sure, but I'm following that path and I'm doing everything that I can to manifest that and make that happen in a very realistic, truthful, um, logical way. Right. And I think as fo- following that, I'm going to uh, expose, I'm going to um, get access to the ears of more people and more people are going to see what I'm doing. And all I can really do is, is give my experience. You know, all I can really do is tell my story and, and um, just um, encourage people to, to, um, to keep following the path, the path towards greatness. You know, I think is, is really my, is my message. You know, I, whenever I stopped fighting, the um for ufc i was 29 years old and i had been through several eye surgeries i had been through a lot of ups and downs those last few years of fighting were um although i went on a four fight winning streak after the eye surgeries it was it was not hard it was not easy to get there that was that was following a very low uh depression time and um just a terrible time in my life so now i'm coming back and then um, I get on this big high and then I'm, and then I, I lose a couple fights and I have little babies. Yeah. My kids were one, basically, yeah, one and almost two years old at that time. And I had, you know, I had my gym and that type of thing. So it was, um, it was just a time where I, I allowed myself, I allowed the, the world 
to kind of pull at me and push at me. And I allowed that to get in my head instead of taking a, a, a step back and realizing, you know, what that, that it's important to follow your passion. It doesn't matter what everybody else is trying to get you to do. Yep. You should be searching for your own, your own personal greatness. And it, it takes, um, you know, a little, a little different way of thinking. Would you say you know? then it's so bigger I, deal than, I know obviously this is probably true, how you respond to a loss versus a win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've talked about that before and probably with you guys before is, is respond. Yeah, anybody can respond to a win and they're, they're feeling great. Yeah. Of course, the mistake there is to, to skip out on training or something and not follow the path because your head is too big or whatever. Um, but whether, whether you win or you lose, you keep following that path. Yes. You have to stay, you have to stay conscious to the present moment, what's actually happening and not get lost in what you're saying. And I know I talk a lot about, uh, about illusions and getting in your head and ego and all this type yeah. of stuff, but it's, it's actually true, man. It it's is like true. I, yeah. from, from living, you know, be, you know, you guys have experienced it probably too. You're you're you looking back at your life. You're thinking, what the hell was I thinking? You know, whenever <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're younger, because you're just you're, yeah, you're yeah. living this you're living this world that you were taught. Right. And at some point, you have to grow up and figure out what it's really all about. And the faster you can do that and get in touch with that is um, is very important. And, and we, you know, I, I guess there's an argument that today we live in a time where that's even Harder. more important i don't know if that's always true yep. but there are definitely different things in this time you know now with social media mm -hmm. and there's just all these different pressures and, and and things to distract you and it's so you know we're on our phones all the time and uh people have a real problem with their their identity you know they have a oh that's for sure that's for sure. I have a real problem with, um, you know, <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah, they have no. a yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of real issues out there. And, um, you know, I feel like, uh, I got lost in that and, and see, as I'm, as I woke up and, you know, or well, let me back up. Whenever I got out of the UFC, all I really did was I changed what I was doing there and I just put it into something else, even more insane and i started chasing money and business and and trying to you know fulfill all these things that i thought that life was about mm. you know and i did that for years and it was actually it made everything even worse right. you know wow. it's all you know so it came to a point where i was i was just like my you know making money and and satisfying what other people think is status and all this type of stuff is not worth it. Yeah. Let me get back to, to what my passion and my heart is. And that's really what I want my kids to see. I used yes. to think that I wanted my kids to see how to make money and I wanted to make money to pass mm. down to them or something, which doesn't even make any fucking sense. Anyway, 100%. <laughs> they need to figure it out for their yeah, self. Or they need 100%. To make their money. You don't oh, wait a second. Wait a second. It. People watching, write that down, yeah, write that last line one. down. You better learn that. Mm -hmm. yes yeah exactly yeah you don't you know in your mind you may be thinking i want to set my kids up so i'm going to do all this hard work and waste my life with them yeah and now they're set up and what's that going to do anyways you know so i realized that Alan, i would rather what one question was it but but that when you're underlining that about the kids right it's fairly important for people to understand that because we've talked about this before on the show before because everybody thinks oh that's the dream of every parent you know i'm going to set my kids up i'm going to make sure they don't struggle and and what right. we found out in life is you don't get shit unless you do struggle like if unless you understand right. struggle yeah. you're fucked like the, you, well, you it, really it just are. takes away you you need we're weird but we need yeah. to see struggle to appreciate yeah, when there's exactly. no struggle. We do. Wow. <laughs> we really, yeah, we really do, man. And it's no, it's no, uh, no different in any, that's just, just how life works, man. Mm -hmm. It's it, to get, mm -hmm. to not get so philosophical. I, I won't get too. No, too, do it because I think this is really important. I really do right. think yeah, what I you're agree. pointing at is I good. I totally agree. I'll, I'll keep it on the level. I'll keep it on the level that I teach my kids because I've tried to figure out how to, to really talk to my kids yep. about this type of stuff. And I'm, 
and I will tell my kids, and I will find things in nature to show them as it, like a, you know, fish, you know, in a, in a, in a, you know, laying eggs and these fish have to swim. They have to, they have to swim. They, there's no chance. There's no, like, there's no guarantee. I'll say that. There's yeah. no guarantee that a fish makes it. Nope. You know what I'm saying? No. You have to, you have to watch out for other fish. You have to swim. There, a lot of them are going to perish. Okay. It, you know, an oak tree and an acorn, the acorn has to overcome itself. It's like, yeah. This is just, it's just weird because we have this whole illusion of how important our, our world is and, and the cars that we drive and the boxes that we live in and all this bullshit. But all we're really doing is we're struggling, as you said, struggling in life. Mm-hmm. We're facing these battles and these, these yeah. things that overcoming them is, is how we get to the next level. Correct. In the, the next level doesn't mean you have more money in your success. Do you do you have do you find that do you find people around you, Alan? Now, like this is where I see now, where like the the next person that ever tells me and starts talking about what kind of watch they're wearing or what kind of car they're driving, I literally will physically walk away. You understand? Like <laughs> I will physically like at fifty five years old. It took me this long to realize what you're saying today. I realized it at maybe say. 48, 49. So way after you. And I realized it, I started getting like, cause I have all those things. Right. So, but right. what I really, what I realized is what made me super happy was going to have coffee on a Saturday with Jesse and three buddies. And we'd sit outside drinking espresso, like we're in the mafia and we'd be sitting there relaxing and enjoying ourselves. And I, that's the only time in my life I ever felt rich. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it wasn't driving the car there that made me feel rich. It wasn't the house in I lived. Rich. I was sitting with my buddies in the middle of the day having a coffee. That made me feel rich for the first time in yeah. my life. And I was driving back home and I started thinking to myself, if I hear one more jerk off tell me about, oh, this is the new car I got, Mark, or this, look at my new suit and this is this, or look at my new watch and look at my new this. I'm like, fuck right. that. I, I can't stand it no more, man. Unless you can put something into my life that just, just give me something about, tell me what your kids did today. Tell me right. what you did today. Tell me what you feel today. But if you're going to tell me what fucking watch you bought today, I'm, I'm going right. to like literally like while you're talking to me, I'm going to start walking away from you. I'm little, I'm not kidding you. My friends know that now do not tell me any shit about your, 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 how much you make this or make that. I don't care about none of that shit. I want to know that your kids are talking to you still at 50 years old, that your yeah. kids are, kids want to come over for dinner on a Sunday. That makes me rich. When my kids right. come over on a Sunday and say, dad, mom, I'm coming over on Sunday. I'm like, oh man, I'm, my heart's beating like a, like a little kid, you know, like when they want to come right. and see their dad on the weekend, yeah. you know, and, and, yes. and that's what I'm talking about. But it's so profound with the way you said it, because Jesse and I have these conversations all the time. And it's interesting that you're in a position right now where you're going to make way more money, make more money, but that's not the end goal anymore. It right. is, it is, it is the, the, equal to your passion and obsession that right. now you're going to be compensated for it but that's not the reason yeah. why you're doing it you're doing listen right. people that want to start a business listen what alan belcher saying today yes. you have you have to fall in love with the process because if you can't yes. fall in love with the process you're dead yeah the you're money ain't gonna matter. You'll, you'll never yeah. make money that's- you'll never be successful so it is like i'm trying to break it down because you made it so simple for people to understand, but it got to my head. I'm sitting here listening. And I'm like, it's like this, like this, you're doing this to me today. And I'm like, you're so right. Because if you can be in love with like, I'm going to practice my jab, my conditioning, I'm going to be in a good mood. I'm going to, I'm going to have great music playing in the background. I'm happy. My kids are happy. Yeah. This all happy. Oh, and I made money at, from doing it. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I, yeah, I, what is the motivate? Cause I, I talk to a lot of people and money's never been my motivation. I, I, and people are like, oh, that's weird. Like, why? I'm like, I don't really care. Like, yeah, it's nice to have, but yeah. it's not I the can motivation. Verify that. I can verify that Jesse's telling the truth. Because yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we met many years ago, he's so talented in so many different things. And I, we were talking about money, you know? And um, no, turn yourself back. 
<laughs> and and we, 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 he was swiping away a notification. I was checking my battery. Checking my battery. So so All when right. we first when we first met, and I said I, we were talking about money, and he goes, "Oh, I don't make a lot of money, you know." And I go, "You don't." Like, cause he's so great at doing all these things, you know? And he goes, no, nah, I, I don't, I don't even pay attention. Now he makes a lot of money, but he doesn't talk about money. Well, but it's still moral, not the but thing the for me. Is, like it makes my wife more yeah. happy than me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I feel that like you're saying a similar yeah. thing. Like I, I don't like, yeah. Okay. It's nice to be able to like go on Amazon and buy something nice, but, <laughs> but, but. Again, the end of the day, like if that is my purpose is to make money, yeah. I don't see the point. I don't see the point. Right. No, there's there's no point. We, we need basic things. We need basic needs. Yep. And there's something in us that wants to, um, especially when you're younger and that's when you, you get kind of prove something or whatever kind of lost because your your hormones are kind of telling you right. they have this code that tells you that you need to climb the hierarchy you need to climb yeah. up higher in life and usually money is a way that we we gauge kind of, that. Yeah. you know put those things together because we can't just go and you know take over a village and be the king or whatever you know <laughs> or, or fight like lions or something so we do it by status you know and if you look at every animal in the animal kingdom they have this they they operate by status the same yes. way we do but we're not animals. We have a conscious, and yeah. and it seems like everything that we do that are more animal, it leads to suffering yes. more in our life. And the more that we do that is conscious and, co- and closer to something greater like God is leads to more happiness. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Like, I, I do think that yeah. there's something bigger. Like, that's to me the thing. Like, money's small. Like, I look at it, it is small. Like, it's not, like, you look at, like, life love family god like there's bigger picture things that yes. that yes. don't break down i mean we've seen things we've seen i'm watching a documentary net right now about the gamestop thing and all the stocks went crazy and they're worried about the the collapse of the financial system how can you put so much faith into something that is so shaky right. that's what i don't get and i see so many right. people building their life on those shaky things and there's nothing solid underneath them to right. to build on. And so if you have, right. God forbid, a storm comes along, something tough comes along in your life, and everything falls apart. Yes. Yeah, 100%, man. And uh, to, to the point about, you know, like Mark was talking about, and it be, you know, having money is nice. Uh, and that I'm in a place where I'm going to make more money. Like, Really, man, that is a that is a great point about like about having a passion for what you're doing. If you were to start a business, and I know a lot of your your viewers are, are business owners and things like that. Mm-hmm. It's um I before I was or when I got out of UFC and I really got into business and being a businessman, mm-hmm. so to speak. That was that was the wrong business for me, mm-hmm. you know. Because it was all about how big, how big can you get it? How much money can you make? And then later, after you put all this work in or whatever, then you have some type of other goal or dream that you're you're going to achieve. But that never comes because you just keep on chasing more and more and more and more. You know. But you see so, it now. You see it now, Alan, all the time on on social media. Listen, I never ever watch Gary V. No disrespect. I don't watch right. uh, Anthony Robbins. I do not watch any of them. And I don't care. They've all retweeted my shit every time I've said something. They've always, they've all retweeted my stuff. But my, my stuff's not talking about, oh, look at my new Rolex or look at my new uh, car. Right. Or, you can make all this money. See, I asked Gary Vee one time. I said, bro, when was the last time you were on a date? Yeah. You know, and I think that's like one of the things that was now. one of the things that. Oh yeah, I want hundred percent. Yeah, I want I want the qualm. You know what the qualm is, okay? <laughs> I want the qualm. I want it all, man. I want health. I want. I've been with the same girl for thirty six years. I want that. I got that. That's what I want. I want health. I want to be with the same person. I don't want to have other people around me. I want my wife around me. I want to have. I want to have. Sure, you have want to have finances. I have to have faith. Number one. Why do everybody I know that talks like this, they always say, 
faith, faith, faith. But no one, my yeah. friends got, they'll, they'll do this, I swear to God. I don't know what's wrong, Mark. I make all this money. I got 10 cars. I got a 5,000 square foot home. I got this, I got that. And they go, what am I missing? Mm. And I do this every time. <laughs> I think so there, was, there, there is something about the, the, the bigger thing. Like, I, I really do think there is. Like, yeah. I, I do think that when you talk about bigger things, it makes yourself smaller. And I'll remember, if we're going to go biblical, believe it or not, I was a pastor for like 15 years. So yes, he was a great pastor. <laughs> don't, don't, so don't, there's, don't there's one line it. that I love, and a lot of people don't understand, but it's like, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it can't bear fruit. It can't grow into something. That seed, but right. we always try to protect that little thing. We always try to protect the thing it's that we so think. True. I don't want to feel. I don't want to have to lay down and do this. But, but as you're saying, as Mark's saying, as we're saying, and I mean, with the gray hair or lack of hair, uh, <laughs> we we have learned that there has to be some sort of laying down of self, the bad parts of the self, to grow and to explode more fruit, like something much better can come right. if you just let go of this thing and in your case it was yeah. the ego it was pursuing something that obviously was hurting you and people around you too right. and and you know and and yeah. we all can have we all have something like that we all have that thing that has to get taken out for us to really hit where we want it to go because i don't think that there's yeah. an there's a, like an opposite reaction like i don't think there's like a i think people look at like that scenario and say well all that you know quote unquote god wants us to do is fail and suck no just like we don't want our kids to fail and suck we want to give them the tools and help them learn that you could actually be even greater than me not because of money not because i just because you were quicker to learn to let yeah. that seed fall to the ground and grow faster right. and, 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 yeah. I and i really just think that people like Man, like, you, you, and again, you pointed at social media, you pointed at all these different things, and, and it's true. Like, and I'm not belittling anyone that, you know, is struggling to make ends meet, because I was there for a long, mostly when I was a pastor, uh, weirdly enough, but <laughs> struggled to make ends meet. And bad, I have five kids, and it was, there was a few years, it was rough. But, five so I'm not be, by, it, by yeah. littling, I'm not belittling that, because I do think there, you're right, the necessity, and we do need money. This is the way the world is. We need it to survive. We need it to, provide for the family and all that stuff absolutely but is that the motivation and if it is then i ask the question okay well what happens if that gets taken away right then what then what are you left with what what do you have what are you left with i, I, I think that that's where that's that's where this whole the whole point is of that when mark said that people are missing faith it's be is everything else is it's about Kind of, it's it's a fake, like what you look like from the outside, right? And it's an illusion to you that you think that this money and everything is a security, but there, there is not. It is not a security. True security is true confidence that yeah. everything is going to work out, no matter what. That's what that's what faith is. I always think know? that like and true is, security is, you are able to function at a great level still pr when you have nothing when you don't yes, have yes. the yes. proof there yes. yet when yes. it's not there it, it well it, it, that's it, the flip side jesse the flip side is hollywood because you see all these really famous people married they got all this money they got all this help yeah, obviously they, look, the they, they look fantastic both of them the guy looks great the, uh, the girl looks great and they can't stay married and you ask them when it's all said and done what what was wrong like how how possibly could you stay married they never ever talk about oh, oh we were we were at church on sunday we're all horribly and we, selfish and we didn't we didn't go to sunday brunch together and we didn't yeah. hold hand we didn't hold hands go walking down the street together <laughs> and we didn't talk about our lives together you know what i mean like these are these yeah. things, these are these little things that like i don't want to sound like a philosopher but i my my dear friend jesse's been together with his wife for a long time i've been with mine for a long time oh, yeah. and the number one thing that it is is faith not any kind of hocus pocus no advice from any therapist telling me about um i have only one therapist i've told everybody that all oh, two my <laughs> wife and 
in God. Well, and I, I, I tell I, I tell that to people all the time and they're like, yeah, of course. But but that's what I'm trying to tell people. They're like, you know, they go to counseling and therapy. I'm like, go to church, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. you'll find you'll find it there. But don't listen to me because I've only been with the same gal for 36 years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I I, I love your I love your philosophy, man. It, it's it's really good. You, you it doesn't have to be any type of Relig- specific religion or no. anything it's it's literally like what you said Go, try try to look for something greater mm-hmm. try to find god or, or whatever and you'll you'll really you'll really start to understand it i mean everyone has that feeling of that they want to pursue that in some way but um it's just not it doesn't fit it doesn't fit in the social norm. Yeah. No. A lot of yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I never preach to any of my friends. Don't worry. I don't give them <laughs> advice either because they're all divorced. Every one of them, except for Jesse, every one of them's divorced. And they all asked me at one point, Mark, what should I do differently? And I'm like, Hey man, I don't know what the situation is at home, you know, but I would recommend these two or three things, you know, without ever yeah. saying the word God, are you crazy? You say that word one time you're done. So I don't even yeah. say that. I don't say that word to them because they would just run to the hills. Like, what is he, why is he yeah. talking about God for? But I would tell them basic fundamental things, but they never did them. And, 99% of people that get divorced, it's about their ego, whether it's the female mm. or the male, it's about ego and they don't drop it. They never think what's wrong with them first. They always think what's wrong yeah, with the other person. Much. And and when you have faith, Someone you know what the first thing you do? And what, what's the first thing when you have faith, what you do is you're like, you question your own self. What did I, yeah. what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Because people with faith do that. And then, then it's much easier in a relationship when you're doing that with yourself. But yeah. instead, instead of blaming your wife, you're saying, what am I doing wrong? And 99 out of a hundred times you are doing something wrong. You're, you're being disrespectful. You don't think you are, but you are. And then you're doing things incorrectly. And then you can self check yourself and get back online. And then you could stay married for 36 years. Oh, that's beautiful. (laughs) That's beautiful, man. Yes. I love it. Well, we it's went the same deep. thing. It's the same thing with martial arts. What you're doing with yeah. with Bern- if you you transfer this well, whole to anything in life with business yeah. with business. When when I'm in business, people say that all the time. Oh, Mark, you're such a great businessman. I start laughing. I'm like businessman. I I barely finished high school. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like you know why you know why because I try to do business with people in a kind way. I'm not trying to hustle anybody. This is what I know how to do. If you if you like what I know how to do, we can do stuff together. It's fantastic. But I can't get in a, like, uh, I'm going to hustle you. And that's not in my d- DNA. So this is yeah. what people have to understand. You apply this to your relationship, to fighting, to being a martial artist. Underline yes. the word artist, right? 100%. Because if you've noticed martial arts, whether bare knuckle or, or MMA, they forgot the word what artist meant because very few guys are creative anymore. They're just, they're in, out, in, out. There's no creativity along the way. And when it says what Marshall- I see with the, the guys now, are they're, they're worried about how many followers they have and yeah. how much, where the money is, where the money is, where the followers are. And if you focus on the, your art and your craft, the money will come. Yep. 100%. Just like, I mean, when I was young, that's, I wasn't, I wasn't, focused on there wasn't even big money really in the fighting fight game you know i was just right. focused on myself i was obsessed with getting better and it led to a lot of success and when it, it all fell apart whenever i lost that way and it, i started doing things that i thought other people wanted me to do what the world what i thought the world wanted me to do for me to fit in and yeah. be something special in everyone else's eyes you know, and that's the wrong way. That's never going to, that's not going to lead you to anywhere um, <laughs> healthy. No, it isn't. Before we finish up though, yeah. Alan, please tell everybody where they can watch your fight at the end of February, because Jesse and I will make a tub of popcorn the size in a garbage bag. We will be sitting there yeah. eating popcorn, drinking great yeah. craft beer, and we will be watching you smash this guy. And we can't wait, but please let everybody know where they can tune in and how they can tune in. All right. February 24th, New Orleans, Louisiana. You could come and you could come and sit ringside if you want, or you can watch on the Bare Knuckle app for $4.99 or the uh, the Fight TV 
app. So there's a couple different places right. that they'll they'll stream it. So you can definitely watch online with one of those. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a great one. My mind is in a better place than it's ever been. My skill set is better than ever. And like you said in the beginning of this podcast, this is the biggest fight of my life because it's the one that's happening right, right. now. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's great. yeah, so I it's like that. it's gonna be great. We will be wearing helmets because when I jump up after you win, I don't, I'm going to smash the drywall in our, you know, like I got to wear a helmet because I, I go bananas when you win. Yeah. So yeah. you have to understand that. I, like maybe I, I don't want no one to film me doing it because it's kind of embarrassing. But when you win, yeah. I am going to go nuts. Like, I mean, awesome. absol- absolutely crazy. I'm already a, Give me a video, I'm, Jesse. I'm not, I'm not a manifesto guy. I'm not. I don't manifest anything. I just make it happen. But the crazy part is I there's something about certain people that I can count on one hand how many people I react to that way. Alan Belcher, you're one of them. I've always okay. known you're special. I've no, always known you're different. And the difference is on February, and when they announce you as the champion, right? And then they they made a huge mistake, bare knuckle. You know why? Because you didn't I was listening at the beginning of this interview when you said you're open-ended on your contract. Which uh-huh. you ab- you absolutely have to be an idiot to leave you open ended on a contract before your last fight fighting for the championship, you know that right? Yeah. Your, your manager must now. be going like this right now. Your manager just hey, must man, be going like this right you now. You said it before. Stay on the path. <laughs> Stay on the path. No. Yeah. Gonna... There are some there are some stipulations about continuing with bare knuckle sure. and things that that hold and whatnot, but for the most part. Yeah, there's some. It's uh, it's pretty open, so it's a it's a good place to be. But yeah. that was that was my deal going in with it is yeah. I had to be able to get to a point where I where I had freedom. That's yes. all this, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. And so and here we are. Second question. Second question. Before we go, why are you in Florida? Yeah. Oh, I'm down here training at uh, Kill Cliff with uh, Chase Sherman. Yeah, I'm actually oh. at his house right now. So awesome. Chase moved down here a year and a half ago. So he introduced me to uh, the Kill Cliff crew, uh, crew. You know, there's Jason Stroud, Henry Hoofs, and a lot of great <laughs> athletes down here. Also, some good boxing too. So I'm gonna spar with Greg Hardy tomorrow night. Oh, awesome! For four or five rounds. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, if, that, I, I, hey, that, that I would like a video. Yeah, that actually that, would be really good to see. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. like a video of that. Greg on before he has, before he has a fight coming up on the 17th. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, Alan, I, I mean, hey. You're one of our best guests. We love having you on. We love talking to you. Um, hey, man, all the best in, in this next one coming up. We're cheering for you. Obviously, Mark's going to be putting I got holes it, in I the got drywall. It in red. But, I, I got it on my calendar in red. But it's, more it's, so, I, I think it. that, you know, even beyond fighting, like you you pointed at it all show, like there's something bigger. And and I, yeah, I'm excited is. to see what, what your next part of the path goes. And, and well, uh, thank you yeah, very we love much. it. I'm very I'm very happy at how this turned out. It was a great talk. It was it was uh, right along the lines of where I feel is is actually impactful for people, and we, yeah. we covered all the fun entertainment yep. bases and everything. But uh, but yeah, man, I really enjoy talking to you guys. I'll do this anytime. Thanks so much. I we might really be the appreciate first, it. First person to come on the Mark and Jesse the third time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's never been a third there hasn't time. Been a third. Never, ne- in there two hasn't years, been one. never. There's been two <laughs> times, and there's only been a handful of guys that came on twice. So yeah. most of the time it's always new, new, new people calling and, yeah. you know, but it's like, sometimes I just like, even though people are super famous, I know they're going to suck. So it's like, I, I don't want to be rude. Like you're, you're a great hockey player. There's no question, but you can't sit on this show for an hour and talk. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. Impossible. Yeah. Just, you know, I'm right. You're, you know yeah, I'm you're right, one of Jesse. the good ones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We really appreciate it though. Again, for taking your time out tonight, but uh good luck training right, and, and yeah, have a great and night. New, and new baby. Bare knuckle people, no, get ready. Right. Put the money on Belcher. It's done. Yeah. Hell yeah. I appreciate well, you guys. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Thanks, Alan. All right, Alan Belcher. Thank you. Easy, easy to love the guy. I mean, oh. I when I met him many years ago at the UFC before he fought, you know, Jason McDonald, me and him started talking in the lobby of a hotel. He knew who I was. I knew who he was, but there was something cool about him. And you know what was crazy? He had a Johnny Cash tattoo on his arm. Oh, and sweet. I thought to myself, Anybody that's got a Johnny Cash tattoo, even though I didn't like the tattoo at the time, I liked, loved Alan Belcher, 
and I love the fact that he had a Johnny Cash tattoo. Cool. Something because I'm a, I love Johnny Cash too. Yeah. Not not so much the music, just his whole being. The whole persona. And, 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 yeah. So I I was just yeah, there's a guy that he, struggled. Yeah, correct. But isn't it weird, Jesse? Jesse, isn't it weird? Hey, how... man, we, we you relate to the people that that are like you. <laughs> I mean, really. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> That's it. Like you have the best. Yeah. I love that. Well, thanks so much, Alan. We are really appreciate. It. Thanks for watching. Hey. Don't forget, if you have a, uh, you know, bumpy back from hair, your yes. dude, and you're asking your wife or significant other to shave that for you, don't get back. Please don't. Check Please it out don't. right over there, backscape.com. And don't forget to check out Crystal Glass, everybody. Chris, Crystal Glass, your clear choice for all your glass needs. Call 310-GLASS or check out crystalglass.ca today. Everything from automotive to commercial, commercial to you name it they, they, put they your do it uh, put a nice rink in your backyard with glass oh could you imagine Whew. wow there you go great idea if you live in canada yeah absolutely yeah well mark down there super bowl ne this sunday who do you got go eagles go eagles yeah, yeah, i'm, taking I'm with you jesse I ta i'm taking your advice on it you usually you're usually bang on with uh i'm bad in Jimmy the super bowl though i'm bad in the super bowl uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. yeah i'm great all the way up Super Bowl, Hit Super and miss. Bowl. You never know. You yeah. never know what can happen. It is it true, and that's why you play. It, it could be over in the first quarter, or yeah. it could be over by halftime, or it could be a close one, right? So. Yeah, I hope that it's like thirty-four to thirty-seven. Me too. That it comes down to a winning field goal. That would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> hey, oh my God. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be yeah. great. That's what I want to see. But hey, let's see what happens. That's exactly. why we watch. Exactly. It's the greatest day in sports. I yes. love the World Cup. I love it. I love it. Super Bowl though, I love. The I best. loved. It's, and, it's and, my and favorite holiday. Last weekend was the worst. Last weekend was the worst because it was oh. the all star all star game of the NHL, which is terrible. And then the NFL now they're playing flag football, oh, yeah. which it's, is which it's is ridiculous. total. I don't even know trash. why. Baseball is the only one that matters. It's the only one that yeah. they should do. They actually put something real on the line. If the <laughs> yeah, winner the winner this. gets home field advantage in the World Series, crazy. That, that's incredible. Yeah, you're gonna play for that. Uh, so yes, yeah, yes. so I mean, you know, I, I just think all the rest are trash. Get rid of the all star. Do <laughs> a skills are. thing for an hour. Interview the, the guys. Thing. Show yeah. you know, make them swim or something. Make them do like laps in a pool. <laughs> make them make them play another sport. Let's see how yeah, good yeah. they are at another yeah, sport. Yeah. I'll Not watch that. that. I don't yeah. want to watch them half ass their own sport. Yeah, long drive contest with yeah, all yeah, the there offensive you go. linemen. Golf. Make with them all golf. the offensive linemen in the NFL, long drive contest. And that would be hilarious, and right. we'd all watch it. All right. Well, Mark, down there, I'm Jesse. Me and Jesse Podcast. Thanks once again, Alan Belcher. Tune in uh, February 24th, Fight TV, or uh, the, app. the, the, the app. Bare Knuckle the, app. The Bare Knuckle app. Yep. Yeah, so make sure you get that, too. Until next, everybody, have a good night. We'll see you next time on the Me and Jesse Podcast. Thanks for watching the Me and Jesse Podcast. Follow us at Facebook.com slash me and Jesse.